Greetings and welcome to another Pokemon 2019 or Pokemon Journeys anime episode review. This time I am talking about episode 135, so let's get to it. Episode 135 begins in Professor Oak's lab. Ash is here showing off the trophy he got for becoming the world champion. His Pokemon soon happily surround him, clearly in order to offer their congratulations. Professor Oak then praises Ash and he even recites a poem he composed in honor of Ash's achievement. Ash's mother then gives Ash a bento or a lunchbox saying that because she knows Ash so well, she knows that Ash won't visit them again anytime soon. Ash accepts the bento and he bids farewell to his mother who wishes him a good trip. Ash then says goodbye to his Pokemon and that since they won't see each other for a while, they should all take care. All the Pokemon joyfully and energetically scream in response. Now I want to mention here that Snivy and the Tauros do not appear in this episode. From the Pokemon Ash keeps here at the lab, they are the only two that do not appear. So, the episode then cuts to Surrey's Park, where God tells all his Pokemon that he met Mew, and he thanks them because the time he spent with them helped him achieve this. However, God then sits down somberly, saying that now he has a lot on his mind. Meanwhile, Chloe wonders if Ash and Go are back yet. Since, as revealed to us by Krisa, Chloe is going camping with Ash and Go. Professor Cerise tells Chloe that Ash is not here yet, but Go is, and he is currently in the park. Now I do want to point out that Mimi is miscolored here. Either it got a tan or this is just a mistake. So Chloe goes to the park to find Go. She eventually finds him just as he reveals to his Pokemon that he wants to set off on a journey. Chloe unintentionally overhears this and, given the delicate nature of the conversation, she opts to hide instead of calling out to go or walking up to him. However, unable to keep still, Eevee does alert go to her and Chloe's presence. Since she overheard what Go said, Chloe apologizes, but Go says that it's fine. They both then sit down to talk, with Chloe wondering what Go meant when he said that he wants to go on a journey. Go reveals that he is now even more interested in Mew after meeting it, which is why he wants to learn more about Mew and he wants to get closer to it. But to do this, he must become a trainer that can properly face up to Mew, meaning a trainer capable enough to stand face to face with Mew. Go then admits that he is nowhere near good enough yet, which is why he had the idea to travel across several regions just like Ash. He believes that if he meets a lot of trainers and Pokemon and if he learns more about Pokemon and the world, then he will be able to face Mew. Chloe assumes that Go wants to set off on this journey alone. Go confirms that this is true, saying that otherwise he would just end up relying on Ash. Chloe then wonders if Go told Ash about what he plans to do. Go says that since he knows Ash well, he knows that Ash will tell him to go for it, and that he feels bad because he feels that he is betraying his friendship with Ash by choosing to travel alone. Chloe realizes that Go does not know what to do. However, before they can keep talking, Ash arrives, and he wonders what is going on. This puts Chloe and Go in an awkward situation. Since Go has a disturbed expression, Ash reminds him of their promise, that they will be smiling when they meet again. This allows Go to return to normal, 
he and Ash then greet each other and they both demand to know what happened in the time that they were away from each other. However, they are interrupted by Chloe, who realizes that they are about to miss the bus that will take them to the campsite. The episode then cuts to them on the bus as it takes them to their destination, from which they then walk across a field of flowers in order to reach the campsite. During their trip, Ash tells Go about his battle with Leon and Go tells Ash and Chloe what happened during Project Mew. We of course don't need to hear any of this, so it's nice that they skip over it instead of giving us a bunch of flashbacks. Eventually, they reach the forest that Chloe visited with her father in episode 120, a fact that she reveals to Ash and Go, who are enamored with the place, since it's full of Pokemon. Chloe says that she knew that Ash and Go would love this place. Now in episode 120, Chloe did say that she wanted to bring Ash and Go to this forest, since she knew that they would like the place. So I love that she does get to bring them here. This is not only really sweet and endearing of her, but it's also a nice bit of continuity. Plus, it's great to see a character follow through with something they say they want to do, which is something that does not happen very often. So, they soon get to the campsite, and they quickly set up their tent and everything else they will need for their camping experience. All that's left is finding ingredients for their dinner. Go notices that Grookey found some berries, though it's unknown where Grookey got them from. Ash says that they should find enough berries for everyone, and so they all head into the forest. As they search for berries, they run into a dog trio and a Cantonian far-fetched. Go basically recites their Pokedex entries when he sees them, showing off how much he knows about Pokemon. Chloe says that she is reminded of when they were kids, since Go also acted like a human Pokedex during Professor Oak's Pokemon camp. Grookey then finds a sleeping Abra, who soon banishes via teleport. This makes Go recall a memory from his childhood. Chloe wonders what this memory is about, so Go recounts the story in question. When he was little, he was often left alone at home. One day, while using his father's Pokedex, which is the same model of Pokedex that Ash had back in the original series, Go found a sleeping Abra in the living room. Though shocked at first, Go was soon curious about Abra. However, Abra teleported away. From this point on, Abra started to appear and vanish all over the apartment, even appearing one day just to drink some juice that Go served for himself. Talk about raiding someone else's fridge. While Go tried to interact with Abra here, even reciting Abra's Pokedex entry, Abra banished once more. However, this time, Go decided to search for Abra outside the apartment, believing that Abra was teleporting to and from somewhere nearby. Eventually, after searching all around his neighborhood, Go found himself in a nearby park filled with Pokemon. While Go was aware of this park, he did not know, prior to this visit, that so many Pokémon live here. In this park, Go found Abra on a bench, but when Go approached it, it once again vanished, though it did reappear nearby, which made Go run up to it again, only for Abra to vanish again. This cycle repeated itself several times until they got back to the building where Go lives. Abra then proceeded to lead Go to the roof. After uh, returning the straw it used to drink the juice, 
Abra banished once more, leaving behind a delighted Go who clearly understood what Abra had done. I have to say that I love this story, since it is just so cool, weird, and quirky, and it perfectly illustrates just how mysterious and unique Pokemon can be. Chloe says that Abra was basically Go's playmate, and Go agrees. Chloe then wonders if Ash has a similar memory. Ash says that he does not have a similar memory about a specific Pokemon. Instead, he has several such memories about all the Pokemon he has met, since he wants to be friends with every Pokemon. Chloe says that it's amazing that Ash wants to do this. They then find a bunch of trees filled with berries. But before they can gather any berries, a Poliwag appears. This is another callback to episode 120, since in that episode, Chloe also ran into a Poliwag in this forest. So, the Poliwag uses Water Gun to cut down a berry, clearly because it wants to eat it. However, the berry falls on a Spearow, who is not too happy about this. Pikachu uses Thunderbolt on Spearow in order to protect Poliwag. The expression Spearow makes here is hilarious. Unfortunately though, this Spearow is not alone. A bunch of Spearows soon appear and they angrily chase after Ash, Chloe, Go, their Pokemon and the Poliwag. Though Poliwag soon slips away through some bushes. It is worth mentioning that this entire Spiro ordeal is a callback to the first episode of the anime. So they are all chased to a river where they find a slowpoke that uses Yawn. Eevee uses Copycat to use Yawn herself, which allows her to put all the Spiro to sleep, thus saving everyone. Go commands Eevee while Ash thanks Slowpoke. Poliwag then peeks out of the bushes, clearly taking note of those who saved it. Ash, Chloe, Go, and their Pokemon then head back to camp to prepare and eat dinner. By this point, it is already nighttime. After dinner, they all gather around the fireplace to talk, and they soon receive a visitor. The Poliwag from earlier, who is here to offer berries as a sign of its gratitude for being saved. After a joyful and adorable little dance, Poliwag runs off into the darkness, while Ash and the Pikachu say thank you for the berries. Chloe says that Ash and the Pikachu are alike. Go says that he thinks so too. Ash says that of course they are alike. They have been together for a very long time, while he has met a ton of Pokemon and has even parted ways with some of them, Pikachu has always been with him. Pikachu is his number one partner. I love that here, they show most of Ash's Pokemon, including those that he no longer has. Go reacts like he does not have a number one partner. But Chloe points out that he does, he has Cinderace. After recalling some of the things he and the Cinderace have been through together, Go realizes that Chloe is right. He also mentions that what first got him interested in Cinderace was its desire to help its friends. This inspired Go to do the same, and he realized how great friends are. Chloe says that Go has really changed, since at first he was a loner that did not want friends. Go says that Chloe has changed a lot as well. Chloe wonders if this is true, and Ash says that it is, since at first Chloe did not like Pokemon. Chloe says that meeting Eevee and seeing all the Eevee illusions with their trainers and the bond they share made her develop 
and interest in Pokemon. Eevee expanded her world. They all then agree that with Pokemon, you can go anywhere and connect with anyone. Golden mentions that catching a Pokemon feels like chance, but it's not. Chloe surmises that Go means to say that fate is what brings Pokemon and the trainer together. Ash says that he does not know much about such complicated things, but that he is glad that he met his Pokemon. They all then say thank you to their partner Pokemon. Go then musters the courage to reveal his intention of setting off on a journey by himself. But in the end, he is unable to bring himself to say it. He just says it's nothing and he changes the subject. However, Ash takes this chance to say that he is planning to go on another journey with Pikachu. This revelation angers Go, since he feels betrayed, because Ash made the decision on his own. Go feels that Ash disregarded their friendship. After tearing up, Go runs away exclaiming that he and Ash are through. Chloe reveals to Ash that Go intends to set off on a journey as well, but since he felt like he was betraying his friendship, with Ash, he was unsure of what to do. Chloe then runs off to search for Go, and Ash soon does the same. As they search for Go, it begins to rain. Even though they search for a good while, neither of them can find Go. Chloe even uses her phone to call him, but he does not pick up. Eventually, Cinderace takes Go's phone and it runs off. Pikachu senses Cinderace and he runs towards it. Pikachu and the Cinderace soon meet up, leading their trainers to meet up as well in the process. Cinderace then returns the phone, showing that it only wanted to lead Go to Ash. Ash approaches Go, but Go tells Ash to stay away. Their attention is soon directed to a glow coming from a nearby tree. The source of this glow is a bunch of Metapod that are evolving. Once the evolution is complete, all the Butterfree take flight. All of this is just so beautiful. Also, I thought that this glow would be produced by a legendary or mythical Pokemon, but nope, just a bunch of Metapod evolving. So, Ash tries to talk to Go but Go refuses to listen, saying that he has not forgiven Ash yet. Before Ash can say anything in response, Go says that Ash should have consulted him first. Ash then argues that why should he consult Go when Go was planning to set off on a journey by himself as well, and he did not say anything about it. Go is shocked because Ash knows this and he soon realizes that Chloe is to blame for this. Before they can resolve their argument, Go realizes that given the current airflow, humidity, temperature and altitude, it might appear. And sure enough, it does appear. It being Lugia, not a scary clown. After flying around for a bit, Lugia flies away, and it clearly beckons Ash and Go to follow it, which they do, leaving behind a concerned Chloe in the process. As they follow Lugia, Go wonders what Ash plans to do. Ash says that he will battle Lugia. This shocks Go, who says that if that's the case, then he will catch Lugia. The two of them then race each other to see who will fulfill their objective first. Eventually, Lugia leads them to a cliff that is a great setting for a boss battle. Lugia then clearly assumes a ready-to-battle stance. Ash sends out Lucario, while Go sends out Intellion. The episode ends with Ash and Go challenging Lugia to a raid battle. So, overall, I think that this episode was okay. It was, for the most part, 
an unimpressive episode that was not very exciting, though it was still enjoyable. It was nice to see Ash, Chloe and Go together just having fun, talking about their dreams, their thoughts on Pokemon, sharing stories from their past, discussing their interpretations of friendship and fate, etc. I like that most of what they said was thought-provoking and a nice reflection of their experiences thus far. I also loved all the callbacks in this episode. However, the use of a montage to skip past their trip to the campsite, plus the huge number of flashbacks really bogged down the pace of the episode. It honestly felt way too slow and disjointed, even for an episode that is meant to move at a leisurely pace. Though thankfully, we did skip the recounting of Ash vs. Leon and Project Mew. Again, the episode was not bad, it's just that it was not an episode that I can call great or amazing, even if I still enjoyed it. Now what truly saved this episode from being completely forgettable is the surprise and the sudden appearance of Lugia, and Ash and the Ghost's subsequent challenge to Lugia. Lugia previously appeared in the episode where Ash and Go met, way back at the start of Journeys, and Lugia led to Ash and the Ghost's first meeting. So it's fitting that Lugia appears now at the end of this series, when Ash and Go are about to part ways. Lugia gets to take part in the beginning and the end of the series and of Ash and Go's time traveling together. So its appearance here in episode 135 is very significant and fitting. Now my one other gripe with this episode is Go's tantrum near the end. I just think that it's very immature that he basically got mad at Ash just because Ash had the courage to do what Go wanted to do but couldn't do, because he was needlessly afraid of something that is not and never will be true. Go telling Ash to stay away and that he has not forgiven him yet was just so childish. I really thought that Go had matured, but it's clear that he still has ways to go. I also don't like that Ash did not reveal what he wants to do next or where he will go next, though this was likely done so that they can surprise us in the next episode. So yeah, overall this episode was not bad. I still had fun watching it. It's just that aside from Lugia's appearance, it was an incredibly mundane episode that failed to elicit any excitement. But that's the video, as always. Leave your own thoughts down in the comments below, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and would like to see more like it, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I love Pokemon and I love making videos on both the anime and the games. Also, please consider clicking the links on screen so that you can check out more videos like this right away. Thank you very much for watching and let's meet again in the next video.